Hi again everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at how to establish your residency rights here in Portugal and this is going to be particularly interesting for UK nationals who now, post the 31st of December 2020, don't have an automatic right to reside in the EU. So prior to the end of last year, British nationals were still EU citizens and still had the automatic right to come and live here in Portugal. Now they don't have that right, so what options do they have? The three key options available at the moment are a Golden Visa, D2 Visa and D7 Visa and that's going to be the topic of today's video. Okay, so looking at residency rights in Portugal now, I know this is stating the, the obvious but I wanted to cover this anyway. But if you are still an EU citizen, so if you have an EU passport uh, of any kind, so if you're an Irish national, for example, you still have an automatic right to reside here in Portugal. The residency application is very simple. You just go along to your local town hall or camera. You get an EU residency certificate. I think it costs 15 euros and that's effectively it. There's no visa process to go through or any further hoops to jump through. If you're coming from outside of the EU, then you need to look at visa options. Now there's several visa options available, in fact there's quite a few visa options available and I've put a link and more information in the description below. Uh, but some of the key ones at the moment are the D2 visa. Now the D2 visa is what's called an entrepreneurial visa. So if you, if you intend to establish a business here and can prove that you're independent financially, you can come and apply for the D2 visa. However, what I want to focus on in today's video are two key visa options which are going to be applicable for most of our clients. And that's the D7 visa and the Golden visa. So first of all, let's examine the Golden visa. The Golden visa is very well known. It's, it's been in existence for many years and it's attracted a lot of publicity uh, from non-EU nationals. So what is it? Well, it's a residency permit issued to non-EU nationals, which obviously post-Brexit now includes UK nationals. It gets you unlimited access to Portugal and indeed the, the Schengen area. And the only condition is that you have to invest in Portugal in a number of different ways, which I'll cover shortly. So the Golden Visa, you receive a residence permit which is valid for two years and then subsequent renewals are done in two year increments. And then after year five, you either have the choice to apply for permanent residence here in Portugal or you can, you can even apply for Portuguese nationality. It gives you the opportunity to live and work in Portugal if you wish. And it also gives you the ability to obtain permits for family members, so spouse, children, um, or even parents who are financially dependent. Also importantly, it's a gateway into the 10-year non-habitual residence scheme, which is very popular uh, here in Portugal. And I've done a separate video covering that, that issue. And basically, it's a 10-year tax intensified scheme designed to attract new residents to the, to the country. So what constitutes the investment to qualify for Golden Visa? Well, there's several ways. Again, I've put the full detail in the description below. But the most common ones are making a capital transfer in excess of a million euros, um, starting an activity that results in the creation of more than 10 jobs, you can invest into certain qualifying investment funds above €350,000. But the most common one that most of you will be aware of is the ability to invest in a property in excess of €500,000. Now, now there are important changes occurring to this last condition. Uh, now I'm recording this video as at April 2021. And with effect from the end of this year, certain areas will no longer qualify um, for inclusion in the Golden Visa Scheme. So for example, most of the Algarve and Lisbon and Porto, if you buy a property there after the end of this year, it's not going to qualify under the Golden Visa 
the scheme. Now, importantly, from a tax point of view, and this is an interesting contrast with the D7 visa, the Golden visa doesn't require you to become a tax resident here, but you can, you can if you wish. So you have the choice, it's very flexible. What are the requirements for Golden Visa? Well, you have to invest for a minimum of five years, and you also have to stay in Portugal for a minimum of 14 days in each of the two year periods of the card's validity. And that, that can be consecutive or non-consecutive. There's quite a lot of documentation to go through, um, and I've put that in the description below in conjunction with a, a timeline of events to give you an idea of, of the typical time scale for a golden visa approval uh, and application process. So moving on now to the D7 visa, um, and this has become increasingly popular, especially with uh, UK nationals. And what the D7 visa is, it's also known as a passive income visa. So unlike the golden visa, you don't have to invest a, a certain amount of money into property or funds or job creation. You just have to demonstrate to the authorities that you're independent financially, hence the term passive income visa. But the, the thresholds to demonstrate have, are quite low, so you only have to demonstrate that you're currently receiving the equivalent of a minimum wage here, which is about €665 Euros per month. Um, you can also bring in family members and for each family member you have to demonstrate that you're able to support them too. So how this works is that you have to demonstrate that you're um, able to generate the €665 Euros per month. And then if you want to bring in uh, a spouse for example, then you have to show that you're able to generate 50% additional income, so 50% of the 665 so again, it's still a relatively low threshold for most people out there to, to demonstrate. The important contrast with the Golden Visa comes in respect of the tax dimension, which I alluded to before. Whereas the Golden Visa you can choose if you want to become a tax resident here, with the D7 Visa you can't, because one of the stipulations is that you spend at least six months a year here as part of the D7 process. And as I referred to in a previous video covering tax residency definition, if you trip over six months of being physically present here in any 12 month period, then you are by definition defined as a tax resident here. So you have no choice. You have to move your tax affairs to Portugal as part of the D7 visa process. Now there's an added complexity in this respect in that if, for example, you're spending the minimum time required of six months here in Portugal, but then spending the rest of the time elsewhere, you need to be careful that you don't exceed the minimum day counts in the other country you're spending time in. And the UK is particularly, particularly tricky in this respect. So, for example, you could spend just slightly more than six months here in Portugal and therefore be a tax resident here but you could be a tax resident still in the UK by spending as little as 45 or even 16 days back in the UK. And therefore you'd be in this position where you're defined as a, a tax resident in both countries. Now in this situation, you're not taxed twice because there's a double taxation agreement between Portugal and the UK, but it does mean that you enter this sort of grey area of double taxation tiebreaker clauses whereby the UK and Portugal would argue, argue over who has the taxing rights over you. And therefore we advise you generally don't get into that position because you don't have the certainty that you need to plan for your affairs. Again, I've put a lot more information in the description below about the D7 visa, uh, looking at the timeline but also the, the requirements and the um, associated fees. So the Golden Visa versus D7 Visa decision is very much a trade-off in the sense that on the one hand the Golden Visa is more expensive both in terms of the initial outlay and the associated government and legal fees but the benefits are that you don't have to become a Portuguese tax resident automatically and that can work in your favour and we can help you do the analysis as to whether that's going to be beneficial for your specific situation. Conversely, the D7 visa 
is cheaper to, to, to start at outset in the sense that you don't have to make any initial outlay. You just have to demonstrate you have a, an income coming through. But the drawback is that you do have to become Portuguese tax resident. There's no choice about that. Again, we can do the analysis for you to walk you through the implications versus your current position. I hope you find this video useful. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to comment in the, the section below and I'd be happy to answer any more questions that you have. Thank you.